I want to talk about homelessness and the Ending Community Homelessness Coalition says at any one time 5,300 people are homeless in Austin and that is a number that keeps on going up. So our first question here is for Mr. Greco. You had an interview with KXAN reporter Grace Reader and in that you said the city of Austin needs to quote, do better with overnight shelters and emergency shelters. What exactly does that look like and how does that work into your policy? Sure, thanks for the question. So. As a longtime community organizer, uh, Central Texas Interfaith, the organizations I worked with fought for and won hundreds of millions of dollars in community investments at the local and state level, including building the political will under the last mayor and, and the county judge to invest $200 million in permanent housing for those experiencing homelessness. Many of the projects the mayor's been cutting the ribbons for were fought for in the last administration and by community organizations. Those projects are working well, have a 96 percent, 90 plus percent rate, some of the best in the country, Community First Village, Foundation Communities. Um, we need to invest more in our overnight shelters and our transitional housing because those are the points of entry for folks into permanent housing, okay? So we need to do better and we need to make sure that we follow that community-based approach for permanent housing in overnight shelters and transitional housing. In this last budget, there was an item at the end of the budget, 4.2 million over half would go to homelessness, and this mayor voted against it to keep the money in the savings account. Can I respond to that? Again, he's not. He's looking at one aspect and not at the, at the whole part, so he can come up with something to to make an attack about. If you look at what we did in this budget, we we made specific investments in a number of different things, including more emergency shelter opportunity including wraparound services for permanent supportive housing and including in prevention and, and areas of that nature. I've also been able to get the state to make $65 million worth of investment in, in different programs in Austin so that we can go further with regard to homelessness. Thank you. Ms. Giannis Polito, you've criticized the nearly $10 million that the city of Austin has spent on the Marshalling Yard Emergency Homeless Shelter. That space, though, has sheltered more than 1,000 people since it's open. So if not the marshalling yard, how would you have redirected that money to have helped as many people? The most important thing here is to listen to directly impacted frontline organizations and the people who are serving the unhoused community every single day, as well as at the point of prevention of homelessness. And I think across the board, it's very easy to see that we can reallocate spending that is not currently serving our needs. The marshalling yard was largely recommended against by best, best practices and experts because congregate shelters don't tend to have good outcomes, and that's what we were seeing. Um, it was used as a basically a reason to, a, a way to enforce the sweeps. We spend millions of dollars on sweeps, which are cruel and ineffective. We, uh, I do see that the council has made some incremental changes to reform things like rapid rehousing, but it needs much more. And that was pushed by community advocates looking for more money at the point of prevention and uh, more that actually keeps people off the streets. We also need to stop incentivizing the demolition of the most affordable units in Austin, which is something this administration is very guilty of and that I would put a stop to. Just to clarify, do you have any evidence that units are being demolished and being built back on? Yes, absolutely. I watched it on the Planning Commission and I heard from uh, low-income tenants and homeowners themselves when they would come to testify uh, and we would watch. We would watch as developers would orient tenants to a relocation fee, a relocation fund that had no money in it. Um, this is all rhetoric. And what, Mr. Watson, you can uh, respond to. Well, what I think she's, to she's referring to a previous. The, when I ask her those questions about, because I've heard her say that before, they're saying that that is not happening today. Uh, and in addition, when she talks about that the marshalling yard was not recommended, we I just brought forward a resolution to keep the marshalling yard open. And advocates that work in the homeless services department, such as Chris Baker, who run, who is the executive director of Esperanza Community, came and pleaded with us to not close that so that we would not be putting uh, you know, 300 people out on the street. Ms. Tova, we turn now to you. When you were on council, the camping, camping was banned in Austin. Ultimately, that was pushed through by voters. But you made, you had many conversations on the dais about what that process should actually look like. Now that we are here, how would you handle ensuring the enforcement of, of that law? So I didn't support lifting the camping ban. I had been a leader um, on council with regard to homelessness, have 
worked um, closely both with impacted individuals who are experiencing homelessness as well as with social service and housing providers. I chaired the ECHO Community Advisory Board for a time and also you know, worked, worked in a number of areas. And it seemed to me that we need to do what, what is contemplated in the action plan to end homelessness. We need to support uh, programs beginning with uh, preservation of and keeping folks who are on the verge of becoming homeless to investing in our bridge shelters, our emergency shelters, and our permanent supportive housing, along with social services. But I want to say, you know, when we invested those federal dollars, which are about to expire, it came with a pledge. And that was a challenge to the private sector to come forward and help match some of those dollars with their investment. And this, and as mayor, I'm going to be a champion for that piece of the solution. We need the private sector to invest in ending homelessness. And I believe there's a willingness to do so with and the right mayor. Yeah, 15 seconds just to clarify, how would you hold the private sector accountable to make sure that they produce those dollars to match those ARPA funds? Well, I think it's a matter of, of having conversations with them, for one thing. Again, uh, you know, both in my work as a council member and in my conversations leading up to that vote that the council took to invest those dollars, which I led on and supported. Um, we had some very strong participation from Finding Home ATX and some other private sector partners in, in going out and fundraising for it. And again, I believe with a mayor who is committed to that work Thank and you. is a champion of it, we can succeed. Mayor Watson, when you took office two years ago, you focused a lot on emergency shelters. How has your strategy evolved over that time? And can you point to whether or not it's been successful? Yeah. Um, yeah, when I came into office two years ago, I mean, everybody remembers what it was like two years ago. We had a broken system. Uh, everywhere you looked, you could tell that we had a broken system. And part of the reason we had a broken system is there, there had been too much focus on just one aspect of the continuum. What I did when I came in is I said we need to, we need to invest in the entire continuum. Prevention, rapid rehousing, emergency shelters, yes. And so one of the problems, we, and by the way, I'd been mayor about three weeks when it was reported to me that the Salvation Army shelter downtown was going to close. What that does is it creates a situation where if you talk about the inhumanity of enforcing a camping ban, you have no place for anyone to go. And as, as was pointed out, and I agree with Mr. Greco, it's kind of the emergency room, if you will, of your housing strategy. People come into emergency shelters and you get them into the system. So we have to, we're, we're still behind on the number of emergency shelter beds. But by doing that, we've been able to get people into the system get them off the streets, and get them into services more rapidly, and it's working, but we need to expand it. May I respond yeah. to the broken system? You have 15 seconds. We're going to ask both of you. Go ahead, but Ms. Toba first. And you yeah. have 30 seconds to respond. Thank you. Um, I would say it is not a broken system, and I really take um, umbrage at that. It is an under-resourced system. You know, it is, and if you're looking for a plan that really invests across the spectrum, you have nowhere to look other than the action plan to end homelessness, which my council passed. And, and it does talk about investments that can be made across the spectrum. The key is that we need additional resources, and those need to come from outside the city. We need more partnerships with other public entities. We need that private sector participation. But we have some very solid plans. 30 seconds to respond. I want to be clear that the framing of the question and the responses made it sound as though I am advocating for getting rid of the marshalling yard. I was referring to the, the, the planning of it in the first place. A congregate shelter ends up with many of the problems that we're currently seeing. Our homelessness budget is much larger than just what goes into the marshalling yard, and that's the reallocation that I'm talking about. Um, but again, um, the, the changes, I can be very specific about multiple apartment complexes that have been upzoned in order to supposedly provide more housing, but all of that housing is far out of reach of the residents being displaced. Mr. Bowen, your website says, quote, the city needs to work with local groups as well as the county and the state to come up with a clear, viable plan for dealing with the homeless. In your mind, what are the keys to that plan? Well, part of the keys is actually, and we just, they recently, uh, the state just funded some money to put another hundred houses out at Esperanza. But we need to look at what's actually working and what's not. If we can model the stuff that's really working and get the other ones to do this, the, the other ones that are not meeting those obligations, and that's where we need to be able to dive into it and find out why they're not succeeding. So, I mean, 
Is it an issue? Yes. It's a major issue and a lot of the people in this city are just totally fed up. Uh, your 5300 uh, number, well that's a different number than what we hear at different times because it's all over the place. We really need some good truth and clarity in understanding what is really working, what is not, and correct the items that are not working because actually the taxpayers are really kind of tired of seeing this entire runaround and it's becoming very frustrating for them. And 15 seconds to clarify, how will we get more accurate numbers? What do you propose? Well, here again, uh, we do have the, the, the homeless office. And several months ago, I asked the, the individual that was in charge of it, said, what is the number for today? And he, he just really wouldn't give a number. And so the numbers constantly change, but there should be a way to have that number within a few hundred at least, you would think.